All right, let's go live, everybody. Hello and welcome. We are live here streaming today on this Thursday afternoon, talking about capturing elements with your mobile device using a great app that you, you can go download today from either iOS or your Android app store, and it's called Adobe Capture. And we're gonna talk about how to use that app to capture some patterns, maybe even some colors, and more for Photoshop. So just give a quick, couple quick shout outs, NG Photography, Rod, Shelly, Nathan Jones, James Boyett, Alan, Namir in the house, welcome everybody. All the way from Zimbabwe, Biggie, Big Mark, Big Marky Mark, welcome. Uh, Victoria's in the house over on the Facebook side, welcome. And uh, I'm glad you love my content and I hope to do more content for you. So lots of people coming in the room today. It's gonna to be a quick, fun topic, hopefully for you. Um, something that you'll be able to use right now today. Capture is awesome, but I'm gonna show you a way to use it with a little, little bit of masking and things that we can do inside of Photoshop. So without further ado, let me go ahead and jump over to my computer so you guys can see what I'm doing. Just checking everything here. Let me start a recording for, for just in case. All right, and once again, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So I'm gonna uh, switch to the computer. I've got Photoshop open in the background. I've also got my, um, my iPhone here um, attached so that you can see what I'm gonna be doing. And I'll bring up the phone in just a second, but let me show you the document that we're gonna capture these elements for and then you'll see how they work. So with that, let's go up to the file menu here in Photoshop. I've already got a Photoshop document that I started working on. As a matter of fact, it's one that I showed if you were at the Photoshop World keynote last week. It's one of the file, one of the files I showed during my demo. So let's go ahead and open it up. And here it is. It's just a fashion shot. It's kind of dark, so it needs a little bit of work, but we're going to add some elements to it anyway. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's improve the photo a little bit and then we'll, we'll deal with uh, what we're gonna do with it. So first thing I'll do is I'll go up to my uh, filter menu. I'll come down to the camera raw filter, one of my favorite filters in Photoshop. I use it all the time. And uh, with that filter open, I can do all my standard camera raw stuff or the stuff that I would normally do inside a Lightroom if I were in Lightroom. So one of the first things I'll do is I'll just go ahead and hit auto tone, let it auto tone the photo to kind of brighten it up. And if I still think it should be brighter, I can brighten the overall photo up with exposure and I can bring the shadows up just a bit more with the shadow slider. So shadows down, shadows up, and uh, even maybe add a little bit of dehaze to the photo just to kind of soften that background a bit. All right, so here's the problem. I don't like necessarily the blues, the blue tinted background. I would love to have a little bit more of a design on that to kind of contrast our subject here. So let's go ahead and click OK. We'll apply that filter to it. And the next thing I wanna do now is go ahead and capture the pattern that we're gonna use. Now, the way this will work is we're gonna use an app called Adobe Capture. So you can go get Adobe Capture from your iOS or your Android uh, store. It's a mobile app. You can use it on iPhone and iPad. You can use it on um, Android phones and Android tablets as well. And just it's a free download once you download and sign in with your Adobe ID, then you'll be able to go in and uh, use that app to uh, capture elements and sync them with your Creative Cloud library. So I've got a Creative Cloud library that I've been using all year for these live streams called Adobe Live 2019. It's got colors, color themes, character styles, graphics, patterns and templates, all the kinds of things that we've been working on so far. And hello, Olivia, I'm glad you're here, as well as LaVon Hall and all the folks joining me on Twitter and Periscope as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring up the phone. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, unlock it. And then we'll switch over to the phone so you can see it. There's my phone. And so I can swipe over and actually down to my Adobe folder. In my Adobe folder, there's the Adobe Capture icon right there on the screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fire it up. Now, when I fire it up, uh, it's going to show me that Adobe Live 2019 library that, that I just showed you, the same one that's over there on the desktop. So what it, it doesn't matter which mobile device you capture on, as long as you're syncing to the same library, that content will be synced to the library. 
Now, um, I'm not going to capture everything that it can capture, but I'm just going to walk you through the categories, especially for those of you who are new to capture. And also for those of you who haven't used it in a while, something came back. Something that was in the original version of capture that got taken out and then made a comeback. So materials, you would use this to capture if you're going to capture 3D materials to use in Adobe Dimension. Uh, so uh, this allows you to do that. Capture type, I've shown this example before where you're actually just going to point your phone at, at a font that you really like or uh, like a, a piece, a printed piece, and it will do its best to match that font with your Adobe fonts and then sync those character styles over to your uh, library. So I did that and it synced uh, the one that I was pointing at with relation bold and I can use that font anytime I want now. Shapes, this will actually convert whatever you capture into a vector shape. You can open it up in Illustrator, you can do more with it, you can just place it right inside Photoshop or InDesign, um, or if you wanted to actually edit the vectors, you can open it up in, in Illustrator. All right, next up, colors. I use this one quite a bit because I may be looking at a, a scene or a, a piece that I would love to have the colors from that particular um uh, <laughs> Rod says, I have, a, I have a gazillion color themes. So do I. Uh, I would love to have the colors from that particular um, environment. So for example, if I were to capture colors, I'm going to notice at the bottom of the screen, there's a picture icon and a camera icon. So if you already have a photo in your camera roll that you want to grab and use, you can. Or you can just bring up the camera and it brings up a live view. So you can see my streaming computer over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and snap to freeze it. And then that will go ahead and uh, capture those colors. You can adjust those colors if you want. So for example, if I think these two are too close together, I can maybe adjust that one and bring it down a bit. And maybe I want that one to be even a little bit more pinkish or a little bit more light or a little bit lighter. And maybe I'm not happy with the green at all. So we'll just change that to a different color altogether. So even if you didn't like the original colors you captured, you can adjust them. And then once you're, once you're happy, you can go ahead and hit save. And then that will save that color theme and sync it to Creative Cloud and down to your computer in that library. And now it's just looking to, to do more. All right, so next up, we're, we can go to looks. Now, looks are what came back. This is like lookup tables, LUTs, L-U-T-S. So lookup tables are great when you want to capture a specific look for a video or you want to capture a specific look for a photo. So if you if you were shooting like a desert scene and you kind of wanted that that brownish old desert scene look on your photo, you can capture that look and then apply it as a lookup table in either Premiere Pro or um, in Photoshop. We're going to be working with patterns today. And as I point the camera at a pat at my screen or anything around me as I'm turning my camera around, I can see what it's pointed at in the middle of the screen, but it's making these dynamic, seamless patterns as I turn my camera around. Um, and before I do this pattern, let's go ahead and look at the last one, brushes. This is typically, you're gonna point your phone at an object and it will create a brush from it. So um, this will allow you to use that brush in Photoshop, in Illustrator, or um, uh, Photoshop Sketch on mobile. So I'm going to go back to pattern and uh, I was pointing over here earlier and kind of saw something I like. I kind of like that pattern for the scene that we're going to be working on today. You can also pick the different styles at the top. So I can pick that style. I can pick, uh, oops, I can pick, there we go. Pick the different styles of the patterns. There we go. Whichever one I like best. I kind of like the diamond shape best. And again, uh, depending on where I point or what colors I point at or what I point at, it will create a pattern based on that. So again, I kind of like that. Let's go ahead and freeze that, snap it. And I can still adjust it even though I've captured it. So I can turn it and create all kinds of different variations on that pattern, like so. I can pinch and zoom the photo itself to adjust the pattern. Turn it more back into the diamonds. There we go. Or these stars. And uh, then once I'm happy with the pattern that I've adjusted, I can go ahead and save it. So it will save that pattern and bring it into my, um, into my library. All right, let's switch back over to Photoshop. 
And uh, if we go to the colors, that or not colors, I'm sorry, color themes, that should have synced that last theme over. Remember I made the orange color on the end, so that way we would know which one it was. The orange color is there, plus all the other adjustments, so I can use those colors immediately in any of my desktop applications, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere, After Effects, um, anything that uses libraries today, and any of my other mobile apps, I can use these same uh, colors. Now, if we, uh, I, don't, I don't need the colors just yet, but if we twirl down to the patterns, uh, that last diamond pattern, pattern number three is there, and this is the one we are going to use. So, how do you use a pattern inside of Photoshop once it's in the library? You can either drag it over, but I found it just as easy to click it, because if you just click the pattern, that will add a pattern layer. It will bring up the dialog box so you can control the size and aspects of the pattern. As you can see, no matter what size your document is, the pattern is seamless, meaning you don't ever see where it repeats, which is awesome because you can make something the size of a building and that pattern will be consistent all the way across the building with no seams. But this is a bit too big and too busy. Let's go ahead and drop it down to maybe a five or maybe a seven. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. I kind of like the size of seven and we'll click OK and that will create the pattern layer. So I haven't lost my photo. My photo's behind it, uh, but it did create this pattern layer. Now, we need to be able to see the pattern onto the background. So to do that, I'm going to use the new live blend modes in the layers panel so I can just pick the blend mode that looks best. So we'll just go ahead and uh, go to um, where it says normal. And then as I hover over each one, I don't have to do anything. It will show me what that pattern would look or what that pattern would look like with any of these blend modes. So I'll go down to overlay. I usually like overlay. Soft light could be, ooh, I like soft light better in this case. Hard light, nope, don't like that one. Vivid light, linear light, pen light, difference, exclusion. Then it starts getting crazy when you get down to the bottom here. Um, some you can barely see, some you can are too much. But I think I liked the soft light. Was it soft light? Yeah, soft light. So now choose soft light. And again, that's non-destructive. You can go back and change it to normal anytime you want. You can lower the opacity of it even so it's less strong. So I can do that and say, you know, maybe I don't need it as strong as it was. But the overlying problem right now is that it's covering not only the wall, it's covering my subject, the person in the photo. And, and while we could have a pattern dress, we don't want a pattern skin. We don't want a pattern face. Uh, so we need to cut her out or maybe not even cut her out. We need to mask the pattern so that it's not on her. And there's an easy way to do that. I'm going to, just so you can see what I'm doing, I don't need to turn off the layer, but I'm gonna turn off the layer just so you can see it. I'm going to turn off the pattern layer temporarily, go back to the background, which is our subject. And then I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna go switch to my, um, my quick select tool and do a select subject, one of my favorite features in Photoshop where it will figure out what the subject is and select it for me. And it did that. Did a great job of selecting the subject. Now, it missed a little bit of the dress here, so I'm just gonna use the same tool I'm already on. Quick select, and we'll just fill in that part that it missed. And it also, I didn't notice this in the keynote, but it also didn't, or select it under the arm, which I don't want it to get. So I'll hold down the Option key to deselect that. Now that I've made the selection of what I don't want the pattern on, I'll go back to the pattern layer, turn it back on, and the pattern automatically comes with a mask. That white rectangle is a mask icon, and we're going to use that to, in the selection we just made to mask out the pattern in the shape of our subject. So we just click on the mask. We switch our color to black which it already is in this case. You hit the letter D to go to um, white and black and then switch it. Make sure your foreground color is black and you're gonna hold down your Option key on the Mac, your Alt key on Windows and hit Delete on Mac or Backspace on Windows. And that will use that selection as a mask on the pattern layer. So now if I hit Command D to deselect, I've just applied the pattern to just the wall. 
because the rest has been masked out. So even though the mask, is, even though the pattern is really on top of her as well, it actually looks like it's even behind her now that we've done it this way. Now, of course, all you would need to do is add some text, which I've already taken the, <laughs> taken the liberty of typing ahead of time. And we can uh, twirl that group down. We can double click on the T for fashion. We can go choose a nice, uh, one of my favorite uh, script fonts for that, Bickham Script Pro Regular. And then what that will give us the ability to do is uh, select individual characters, access the glyphs, which is automatic. As I hover down and I can say, oh, I would love that N to curve up that way. I would love to have a better letter F. I would love to have a different H. So we'll, we'll select the H and then hover down and we can get a nice curly um, letter H. All right, so now we'll select the whole thing. And we'll just hold down our command key on Mac, PC control key, and we can just scale this up because it will do it proportionally. And then we can um, move it in place and put it where we want it to be. All right, maybe something like that. All right, and that is our use of Adobe Capture to bring it. Now, if I wanted to, I wasn't done, but one more thing. If I wanted to use those colors, I can use the color, for example, the color themes, right on the text that we had below. And so if I were to, oh, hang on, let me switch this here. Should be able to, hang on, let me do it this way. I want to bring that color over. It's not letting me while that's selected. Okay, hang on a second. There we go, get that. There we go, okay, it did it. So I got my color in, so I used one of the colors from the theme. I just wasn't seeing it updating, so it was bothering me. But got the color, I wouldn't use that color in this case, but if you wanted to use one of the colors you capture it, you could, and, um, and away you go. So that would be a better color, let's use that one. So just selecting a layer and clicking on the colors in your theme will show it. Oh, actually, that looks better because it matches the dress. Let's use that. Okay, so now we've used Adobe Capture to capture colors and patterns, but you could capture materials for uh, Dimension, brushes for Photoshop and Illustrator and, and Sketch, um, lookup tables for Premiere and After Effects. Am I forgetting anything? Color. Oh, and shapes for uh, vector to actually do a conversion from your image into a vector shape. So go ahead and make sure you download Adobe Capture from your respective app store whether it's the iOS App Store or the uh, Google Play Store, and uh, install it on your mobile device and start capturing things today that you can use inside of your designs. And that will set you apart from everyone else because you're capturing unique things that no one else will have access to because no one else has access to this side of my room. <laughs> All right. So with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Go check out Adobe Capture. And with that said, have a great weekend. I don't think I'm going to be streaming tomorrow, but in case I don't, have a great weekend. And we will definitely catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.